welcome to this episode of Build Your AutoCAD IQ. On this edition of the Third Dimension, we have something really exciting for you guys. We're going to be doing 3D printing. We're going to show you what it takes to go from AutoCAD 2017, uh, exporting your models, and introducing you guys to Print Studio, and eventually getting to the 3D printer. Now, Victoria and I wanted to go through this 3D printing webinar because we, we saw this incredible opportunity to build on what we did the last time we met, where in AutoCAD 2017, we created these digital 3D chess pieces, and we thought, hey, here was an incredible opportunity to go show you guys what it takes to go from the digital to the tangible and physical 3D. Now, I'm sure a lot of you out there have heard of 3D printing, you probably have a variety of different experiences with it. You might be experts, you might just be figuring it out for the first time, or just hearing about it for the first time. But um, this is something that is becoming more and more prevalent in today's society. But what you might not know is that 3D printing actually really started way back in the 1980s. And it hasn't been until recently that the materials for 3D printing have become a lot less expensive, as well as the technology has gotten to a point where the 3D printers are getting smaller, and as a result, they're getting a lot less expensive and also becoming a lot more accessible to people. And I think we're going to touch on that a little bit later. There's Even if you don't have a 3D printer, that doesn't mean you can't do 3D printing. So we're going to... It's become so accessible for um, hobbyists nowadays to jump in, create a 3D model in a program like AutoCAD or Fusion, and um, send it out to a 3D printer, or for a, a little bit of money, get your own. And exactly, you know, exactly. And, and this really fits in well with what we did the last time we met for uh, Beyond the Third Dimension. My name is Alex. I am an Autodesk Technical Support Specialist based out of the Boston office. I specialize in AutoCAD Map 3D and Infrastructure Map Server, and I'm actually joined today in Boston by Victoria. You want to introduce yourself? Yep, I'm Victoria Studley. I'm based out of our Manchester, New Hampshire office, also a technical support specialist, supporting some uh, AutoCAD, AutoCAD architecture, and MAPD. And last but not least, we got Nauman, our expert elite. He's going to be hanging out with you guys in the chat, so uh, feel free to ask questions. We do everything we can to, to get to all of you. Now we have a lot of content to go through today, so there's some clerical slides that I'm just going to go through. Yeah, I'm going to go through this pretty quick, but essentially what you guys need to know is everything is recorded. You have access to all of these slides, all of these links. You can see our schedule. And, and we'll send it out in a follow-up email right after this presentation and uh, as soon as we get the video uploaded, so exactly. don't worry, you won't miss anything. Exactly. So, all right, so for today... We're going to be going over uh, prepping our models in AutoCAD 2017. This does not apply for LT. This would be only for um, AutoCAD. Next, we're going to be going through the functionality of exporting the models from AutoCAD. We're going to introduce you guys to Print Studio, which is a separate software. Don't worry, it's free. And at the end of the slide, we'll actually have a link for you guys so that you can go get it and uh, install it and start playing around with it. All right. With that said, let's uh, jump into AutoCAD and we'll pick up where we left off last week or last month, rather. So here, can you see my screen? No, man, does it look good? That looks good. Excellent. All right. Thank you. All right. So last time we left off with um, a set of chess pieces, some pawns and a table. And we're going to walk through the journey from taking that, uh, that pawn from AutoCAD, where we just finished modeling it, through a, um, to a program called 3D Print, or Autodesk Print Studio, which helps you process the file and get it ready for a 3D printer. And um, finally, it's printed out of a, um, uh, a 3D printer that we have here in the Boston office. Now, after you've prepared this model, you could essentially print this from any 3D printer. You could send it to a, a 3D print service if you don't have access to one. Uh, so we have a lot of options here. 
Uh, this is great for prototyping. A lot of 3D printers have, um, they tend to use plastics like PLA or um, ABS, and they're very affordable, um, much easier to uh, iterate on your designs if you can print them out and physically hold them. And it's much more affordable to do that nowadays as to uh, as opposed to previously you would have had to spend a lot of money to go have a, a cast made or something or um, try to fabricate that in a much more expensive material. Um, so preparing your model in uh, AutoCAD is, um, is important. You have to make sure that you're thinking about the kind of printer that you're using. Um, so we know that we're going to print ours in a PLA uh, filament because we're going to eventually print this out of a uh, what's called a type A series printer, uh, series one printer uh, that we have here on site. Um, this would also um, apply to say a MakerBot or uh, Stratasys um, and a, a whole bunch of other ones. The, the market is just booming with different um, 3D printers with these types of filaments in them. All right, so we know that our, um, our model here that we created um, is a revolved surface. And so we know that it's watertight. Um, we also have this solid. Either one of these will work. I'm just going to select it. And then on the output tab in your 3D modeling workspace, if you're not there down in the right hand corner, click on that workspace here and head on over to 3D modeling. Uh, on that output tab, you'll see a couple of options for 3D printing. You can send to a pr 3D printing service um, by using the 3D print service command, or what we're going to do is um, use the print studio uh, button here. You can also use the 3D print command, which will do exactly the same thing. As long as you have Autodesk Print Studio installed, it will launch the program. Uh, if you don't have it installed, it is free. We provided a link to download that and install it, and you can play around with it with your own 3D models. Um, so from here, I'll use this. Um, actually, one more thing before we leave AutoCAD and head out into Print Studio. Um, you can use the SPL out command, which has been available in AutoCAD for a very long time. Um, that creates a stereolithography file, an SPL file. Um, which is a fancy serial lithography is a fancy word for 3D printing um, as far as we want to delve into that today. So if you're working in a previous version of AutoCAD, use the SPL out command. If you're working in AutoCAD 2017 or later, uh, you can just click on the 3D Print Studio or Autodesk 3D Print Studio uh, icon here. And the first thing that you'll see is this message asking you if you want to learn about preparing a 3D model for printing. So if you want to learn a little bit more after this webinar, go ahead and click on that and it'll bring you out to the documentation uh, about some recommended practices for 3D model printing uh, from AutoCAD or from any other program really. Um, all right, we're going to continue on. So we get this 3D print options dialog box and you have the option to select multiple objects if you want. Today, we're just going to select this, um, this single con and walk it through. Uh, you can also use quick select, which is really helpful if your file has a lot, of, a lot going on. You just want to select certain things. If you know that you want to print something, uh, this would come in handy for an architectural model. Let's say that you want to print an entire building um, that's, uh, you know, it, it's drawn in uh, real time or real scale. Um, you can enter, you know, eighth inch equals a foot, whatever the, the scale factor is for that. You'd enter that in here, and you could print an eighth inch model of your um, of your design very quickly. Um, for here, um, for this one, we drew this in real scale, and we want to print it in real scale, so I'm going to leave the scale factor at one. Um, you can also view it before you export it, just to make sure that it looks the way you want it to. You can pan uh, through the orbit right in the viewfinder there. So we'll click OK. And from here, it's going to take an SPL file and pop it into Print Studio. And so now that we're in Print Studio, you'll see our pawn. And the pawn is placed on uh, the print bed. And this print bed is associated with a particular printer. So the first thing you want to do when you get into Print Studio is to select the printer that you want to prepare your file for. 
up here in the left hand corner where it says series one there's a little button to the left you click on it and you get an option for printers you can connect to a usb printer by plugging it in directly you can connect to a network printer if your printer happens to be on your network you can send to a 3d print service like 3d hubs or shapeways um, and we have links for those. We do, yeah, okay. exactly. And, and just briefly, 3D Hubs is um, a service that helps you find local 3D printers that will print in the material that you want. Um, and then uh, you pay them a cost per cubic centimeter, I think, of the, uh, of the material. And then they ship it to you or you can go pick it up. Um, Shapeways offers a, a wider variety of materials and they run their, their own printing business there that uh, lets you print out your, your items. Um, so there are a lot of different, uh, those are just examples, there are a bunch of different services like that popping up all over the place. And it goes to show how accessible 3D printing really is. Yeah, You can yeah. just lease the time and materials on someone else. Exactly. And some and of if, them even deliver them. And if so. you have your own 3D printer, go check out 3D Hubs and, and services like that if you want to get involved in helping other people print their design. Sure. So, um, so here, what we're going to do is design this to, uh, to print later. Um, and what this gives you is a list of available printers. And so these are all the ones that are compatible with uh, Print Studio right now. And one of the great things about Print Studio is that instead of having to learn a proprietary uh, software to prepare your model uh, for each one of these 3D printers, Print Studio um, has a, a series of different popular printers that um, allows you to just learn one piece of software to prepare your model files and then export them to any one of these printers. And so each one of these is going to come with a couple of different presets that we recommend um, as good uh, as good optimized or well optimized settings to print your model in um, either low resolution, medium resolution, or high resolution. Uh, so we're going to pick the type A series one and click OK. So I just talked a little bit about settings. Um, if you want to get into the particular settings for your printer, you'll click the gear icon underneath the printer up in the left-hand corner here. And this will give you the settings for the uh, particular printer that you picked. If it takes more than one type of material, um, say it takes two or three different sizes of PLA, uh, then you would pick from a list. But this one only has um, one compatible um, filament, so there's no choice here to be made. It's just automatically populated. Uh, the profiles are the particular settings for that printer. And so if we click the drop down list, there are four in the list right now. There are three that should be here by default. Type A draft is a lower resolution, quick, you know, I just want to send it and see what happens kind of uh, uh, setup. So you'll notice that it has a layer height of 0.3 millimeters. Um, the number of perimeters on it, the, the infill density is 5%, and I'll show you what that looks like when we start to prepare the model. Uh, the second one, the standard, will give you a little bit higher resolution in the, in the model that's outputting. You'll notice that the, the layer is a little bit thinner, a little bit finer, um, but it's going to take a little bit longer. The infill density is 15%, so you're, you're, you have a more densely filled model. Um, this might be for something like the middle of the road. Um, and then finally, the uh, the best quality here will give you 20, 25 millimeters, so very thin, um, very uh, low resolution, or sorry, very high resolution for this um, particular printer. And the, uh, the infill density is at 30%, so it's going to be a, a fairly solid model, but it's going to take much longer than the other two. Uh, if you want to create your own custom setting, you can click the ellipse off to the right and say duplicate profiles, or if you've um, imported or sorry, if you've created a custom profile on another machine and you want to import it, then you can import it here. If you want to export the one that you made and import it into another uh, machine, then you can uh, export it from here as well. So if we I'm just going to choose the uh, the copied one here that we created earlier, and um, I'll show you what that uh, allows you to do. So underneath Advanced Settings, these are locked with the three standard profiles, but as soon as you create a copy, these become editable. 
and you get a lot of detail that you can change about the um, about the, the, the type of model that's coming out of your uh, printer. Um, one thing to notice up here in the basic settings is that you can enable a wrap. And what a wrap does is it puts down a layer of filament below your model to keep it from peeling up off the build plate. And we will show you what that looks like with some pictures because it happens. <laughs> Um, one of the great things about 3D printing is that it's trial and error, but it's very quick to just print it out and say, oh, no, that's not what I want, and, and restart that print, tweak a couple of settings here, and, and try again. Um, so here you can change the supports, which um, hold up areas that would be printing out in thin air and would otherwise fall down and, and fail and cause a, a giant mess on your build plate. Um, infill is the amount of... Um, amount of material that's filling in the model, like it sounds. Um, and then we have a series of other settings that we're not going to get into. You can control the, the, um, the temperature of the plate. You can control the uh, temperature of the print head, that sort of thing. Um, there are all sorts of things that you can control here. Uh, we just want to give you a basic overview. So we're going to keep all of these settings as they are in the um, in the standard setup here. All right, so once you get your settings the way that you want them, um, you can come in here and and this will show you the uh, the dimensions of the build plate for um, for the printer that you've chosen. and um, and we'll show you a model on there. And there are a few things that you can do to adjust the model on the build plate now that you've got it there. So it's selected right now. It'll glow blue when it is selected. And under layout, you'll notice that there are a series of tools over on the left-hand side. Now, before I go through these tools, let me just direct your attention down to the right-hand corner, the object browser. If you have multiple objects in here, you can turn them on and off. You can hide them or show them. Um, you can turn supports on or off very quickly over here. Supports. Oh. oh, they're on. Now they're off. Um, you won't see that until we get to the support section, but I'll show you that in a minute. And then if you right click on this, you can delete it, you can hide it, you can duplicate it. If you want to print a, a bunch of them once you get it set up, you can do that very quickly here. All right, you can also change the units. So if you know that you're printing in inches or millimeters um, or centimeters, you can change that down here. So now that we have this, we'll select our com, and you can zoom in just like you can in AutoCAD. You'll notice the view cube up in the right-hand corner. That works the same as it does in AutoCAD. And then here, you can move this until you move it up. You can move it down just by grabbing these, um, these different swivels. You can turn this, and you'll notice the degrees. You can manually enter the degrees. So if you want to leave it 90 degrees, it'll turn it for us. And this gray section represents the entire print bed of the typer that you selected. So different it does. different printers will have different size uh, areas that you can move your objects around for the Yeah, printer. exactly. So if you had a much smaller print bed, it would look much smaller. If you had a giant 3D printer, it would show you a much bigger area that you have to work with. And you'd be able to fit more. Yeah, yeah. So once you have this, if you want to print your whole set of columns all at once, you can. Just keep in mind it's going to take a little bit longer and sure. you need to watch over that print. Okay, so you can center this on the build plate. So that comes in handy if you're if you find that your model comes in at a at a weird spot, like up in the left hand corner or something. You can center it. Um, you can move this to the build surface. So if I, I move this up like this, and uh, I. I don't want to have to put supports underneath in order to hold that up. I can just say move to build surface, and it'll move it down. If you hit auto layout, it'll give you what the program thinks is the optimal um, layout in order to print that. You might be wondering why the optimum layout is the pond laying sideways, and that's because the printer will print faster in the X, Y plane than it will in the Z axis. So it'll print faster going side to side than it will up and down. 
that's true. It, uh, it did throw me for a loop the first time we imported this and it came in lying down and we were like, why, why is our pond lying on its side? Sure. And then we figured, we figured out why. It, it did take a little bit longer to print it straight up. Yeah. But we'll also show later on that why that might even though this work. is optimum, yeah. it didn't necessarily work for us. Yeah. So you can scale it here um, by grabbing these little corners if you want to scale it up or down. Um, you can scale it, you know, you can change your scale factor manually by entering it over here. Or you can scale it to fit the build plate. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now because we don't want an enormous pond. We like it the size that it is. You can also measure using this measuring tool by selecting, let me just select a couple. Let's, there we go, yes. So 34.37 millimeters approximately. It's not as precise, I've found, as um, the distance command in AutoCAD or actually dimensioning your object. Um, but if you just want to know quickly what, you know, uh, roughly what size it is, uh, that comes in handy. Um, this here is the lay flat command, and it should, if it works well for me today, it did not work well for me in uh, practice. But um, what this is saying is that the model doesn't have any stable orientation. It's saying it doesn't have a surface that will lay flat, um, but it should detect this bottom piece. And I'm not sure why it won't do this on our model. There might be something wrong with our model. Maybe we did something funny with it. Um, but in some models, it does work. And it's handy to lay that surface flat on the build plate and then print it from there. All right, so that's about it for layout. Let's move on to repair. So if we move on to the repair segment, um, the most important thing to notice about the repair um, when you move into this portion of the process is that this analyzes your model automatically. And if it shows up green and says no problems, you're good to go for the most part. Um, you can inspect geometry if you find that it says, it'll tell you how many errors it finds. And then you can inspect the geometry. This one was fine because we know that we modeled it well based on some of the practices that we covered in the last webinar. And I'm actually, I wonder if the rook that we modeled last month would have had a problem where we just did the surface. You might have, yeah. Because when we, when we cut into it, it essentially had a complete yep. void space. So I wonder if it would have done something here or let us know. I think it would have. It would have if it wasn't a watertight uh, model, it would probably tell us that it had a hole in it. And then you can patch it using the patch holes bit here. And, and these are just some really simple, like if you have simple problems with your model, you can repair them right in, um, right in Print Studio instead of having to go back to AutoCAD or Inventor or Fusion or wherever you modeled it. All right. So we're not going to do anything with these um, today because it, it checks out and we want to show you some cool things. Um, so here we're going to move into the support and I'll show you two different options for supports. So I'm just going to rotate this around and in case you're wondering, the, um, the right mouse button, if you hold down the right mouse button, it lets you rotate around using your mouse. It's not the middle mouse button that uh, threw me for a loop at first. All right, so now that we're in here, um, there are a couple of options. You can optimize the rotation of the model um, with, the, with the automatic supports. Um, this is saying that it's optimized. It's lying down on its side. It's going to take very little time to print, and there's not a whole lot to support. Oops. So here you can add automatic supports, and we'll click that just to show what happens. Now these yellow areas with the orange... Um, the yellow, yellow and orange checkers, these are saying that these areas need support. Um, so when we tried this, we did a test print of this particular model with the automatic supports on it, and it peeled it off the build plate. We actually added a couple of extra and did a second run, and it still peeled up off the build plate. Um, so there are a couple of things we could have done. We could have uh, put a raft underneath it first sure. to hold it down. Um, but we chose to stand it straight up, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, but, so now we have these um, supports underneath it, and it's saying that there are a couple of other areas that need support. So if you're, you can delete all the automatic supports from here if you want to, and add them back in. Um, but if you say, say you want to put in all manual supports, you can come down to this second button down here, manual supports, and then you get this this little button, this little yellow bit, 
and you click on an area of the um, an area that needs support on the model and then you click on an area on the build plate to hold it up and it'll turn green when it's in an area that you can click and it's red when you're in an area where you can't so it's added a support i think you can do this from the other direction too you can although it's harder i find it easier to go from the model to the build plate because sometimes if you start from the build plate it doesn't find any viable spots on your model so i'll start from the the model this time and then pick a spot on the build plate and if you're having trouble just keep rotating around until you find a spot this one doesn't like me all right let's try here instead there we go all right so now we get another support there so you can go in and add them manually if you want um all right so i'm just going to use my we'll go home here and this brings you back to that front view all right so let's say um, we went through and we um, we did a test print and it didn't come out right. Um, let's go back and we'll show you what we actually printed. I'm just going to remove those supports, delete all the supports, and then we'll go back to layout. And then I'm going to just to show you that you can go back and forth between these different segments. Once you once you move on, you don't you're not stuck with the choices that you've made here. Um, I'll rotate this around. I'm just going to flip this up 90 degrees. And if you find that it's not quite going where you want, you can manually enter that with one more mistake. All right. So now that we have this, we'll go back to supports. Let's skip right over repair. It's going to be glaring. Um, which we probably should go to repair first and just make sure. But it, it does check out. Um, all right. So. There's our supports. Um, we'll go to add supports. So these are the automatic supports that are added for this. It's just holding up that area of the model that's hanging out too far for the print head to print um, on the support image. All right, so now that we're happy with that, we'll move on to preview. And preview will generate the tool paths. The, um, the tool path is the path that that print head is going to follow. So you'll see this, let's see if I can get it. All right, you'll see the cyan line that starts over here. It's gonna come along this way. It's gonna make a straight line out to the model itself in the center of the build plate. And then if you zoom in, this is showing us the very first layer of the print. So it's gonna follow this, it's gonna go around the circle. It's going to, it's a little bit hard to see where it's going. Uh, looks like it comes out here, does the support, comes back in, does the infill, and then goes back and does the other support. Um, but it shows you exactly the path that it's going to trace in order to do that. And then um, one really important thing to do is to check all of your slices as you go. Um, this one has 254 slices. If we had done this laying down, it takes fewer slices, which is why it takes less time. Um, see you can also see all right so this is important if you're going to send this to a print service the uh three cubic centimeters that's how much material it's going to use uh approximately and then the estimated time so this is about an hour and 14 minutes that it's going to take to print this and um, we found this to be pretty accurate yeah yep. i think so um so here you can step through each slice by just clicking that up arrow and you can step through them one at a time. And you want to make sure when you go through that nothing looks really strange. Um, I haven't found anything that looks really weird yet. No. Um, but you can also use a slider if you want to go through it quickly and watch it go before your eyes. That's pretty cool. I, li I, like, I just like how that looks. Yeah, it's kind of cool. There we go. All right. So one thing that I'd probably want to check and make sure is okay is where those supports meet that bottom piece. So maybe you want to stop here and manually step through and you want to zoom in a little bit just to see what that looks like and step through these one set at a time just to see what that looks like layer by layer as it prints. And you notice that once it has that support, it can go out a little bit. Um, and I was a little worried about that at first because I've printed out the MakerBot before and it, it was a little less tolerant than the Type A seems to be. And I was actually worried about the very top when we did our testing and, and seeing where the supports were needed, we we had the yellow and orange checker on the very top, but the 
Yeah, it's just a little bit out gradually and then Yeah, I think it took worked out pretty good. Okay, so here, if you're happy with it, everything looks good. And we click on export the printer. And what this does is it creates a decode file. And so we've created a bunch of them here. Um, so you just save it where you want it and um, save that decode file to your machine and it should be good. All right. So that is AutoCAD all the way through the end of Autodesk Paint Studio. Uh, Alex is actually going to take over and tell us a little bit about what happens next. Sure. And this is a, a little tricky um, to show you guys. We're going to have to go back into PowerPoint. Sorry. Apologize. We have to go back into PowerPoint. Try to avoid doing this. But um, the reason why we we can't really show you directly from the type A plotter that we're using is because unlike other 3D printers where you can just put an SD card in um, and kind of just show what's going on, this one actually required us to make a, a network connection to the printer itself. So it's not something that you can you can do while we're in the Go to meeting. But I put these slides together to just give you an introduction of, to the type A. Uh, some of the parameters that we need to be aware of and, and really just a general introduction to the interface. So once we've connected wirelessly or through Ethernet, um, it's very easy. We don't need any additional software to be installed. All we have to do is open up a website and each type A printer will have its own unique identifier, almost like an IP address. And we just put that into a, a browser and this will automatically pop up for us. Now this is broken into several sections in the upper left corner up here. Uh, this is a, an indicator of the process or progress rather of the 3D printing. We'll have an idea just like we saw in Print Studio of the amount of materials that are going to be used and the approximate time that it's going to take for the printing. In here, over here on the right side, there are actually webcams built onto the Type A, and we can make really cool time-lapse video of the print process. Down at the bottom, we have this section here. Uh, we have several different tabs, file, temperature control, G-code, viewer, terminal, and timepiece. We'll go through these. The first, well, actually, the, the file tab is, is really This is where we would actually upload our file. And I'll come back to this in a second. But the next tab is temperature. Now, in order to make the 3D print work, we have to heat up the plastic material to a certain temperature. And also, we have the option of heating up the bed on which we're going to be doing the 3D printing to help with the cohesive um, nature between the, the plastic and the cable that it's being printed on. Now, the great thing about the G code file is that it takes a lot of that guesswork out of it. It will actually, because we know what printer we're, we're printing to, we, we know what material we're going to be using, it'll it'll take a first stab at what those temperature parameters are going to be. So Kind of like the magic of Print Studio. Yeah, exactly. It is uh, really, really helpful. Especially if you're not overly familiar with those materials, you'll, you, you'd have no idea unless you had yeah, really we, close we, enough. We didn't really know at first, you know, like, oh, we're... What temperature do we need that print head or that right. um, or that bed to be set at? And I know the um, the manager of that 3D printing room down there. He, he said, "Oh no, it's, it's already yeah, done. It's already in the decoder. It's, it's done oh, for you." All right. That's that's so that when I checked it out. Yeah. Right. That being said, you do if you test and realize it's not working, you do have the option to override what those uh, default G code temperatures are going to be, and this is where you would do that. And again, trial and error. The next really important thing we need to worry about is actually calibrating the print head and the platform. So what we want to do is over here we have the option of moving the print head you know throughout our print platform area and we want to make sure the print head is just touching the bed or platform. So what we did is we moved the print head to the four corners of the table we brought the platform right up to where it was touching the, the print head and made sure that that platform was perfectly level and 
always just coupled to the, the print head. If there's too much space between the print head and the platform, the plastic's just gonna blot out. It's just not gonna be well controlled. And depending on the printer, this is just how the type A works. You do each corner. Um, each printer is going to be a little bit different. Uh, the higher end printers will do this all for you. So well, the Stratasys. Um, but there's usually a little, yeah. Yeah, the Stratasys is another one we're gonna, we'll, we'll show you guys. It doesn't need any of this calibration, but this one. Most of them need a little bit. Right. But it takes maybe two minutes. Sure. So I'm gonna just quickly go past the G-Code viewer and, and terminal. I'll, I'll come back to the G-Code viewer. The terminal is, is just a, a constant stream of data uh, ensuring that there is communication between the laptop or whatever computer you're using and the type A itself. The last tab is the time lapse. And here we have options for controlling um, a whole bunch of different things, you know, the frames, uh, you know, how many frames per second do we want to use in, in the interval. Now going back to the first tab, um, again, this is where you would upload Underneath the upload, you have your repository of all the other G codes that you had imported to this specific type A machine. And once it's in, once you've done your calibration, all you have to do is go ahead and print. And you will notice that nothing is gonna happen right away. You, you might get concerned. I know I was a little concerned. I was thinking, oh geez, you know, nothing's happening but it's actually not doing anything on purpose. It's taking time to bring itself up to temperature, up to where the G code suggested the temperature settings should be for the print head and the bed. But once it's done that, you'll see, you can see in the little time-lapse video corner that the head is starting to move. And you'll also be able to see that in the G code viewer. This is similar to what we saw in print studio where we can analyze step-by-step, -step. but through the G code viewer, you can also see it in this interface for the type A, and it's good for, again, quality control and making sure that things are looking the way they need to. So we're gonna give this a shot, guys. We're gonna see. Cross our fingers. Cross our fingers. We are gonna show you a video of our time lapse. It doesn't have any audio, but Nami, can you see that? Yes, I can, thank you. And so I, you probably saw Victoria and I, we were, we were right on top of it because we had a both failed attempts. It's pretty and fascinating to watch. Yeah, and it's pretty cool. Time. We were very, very nervous when this thing started going because you know, we just wanted to make sure that it was working. And you'll see that the print head is only moving in that XY plane. And as it's depositing each layer, the bed itself is being lowered. And in the video, you can see some of the supports along with the palm. And for those who can't see the video, we're, we are going to record this and uh, post it up on YouTube later. So if you're having trouble, it might be a bandwidth issue, um, but we will definitely post this later for you to see. Make sure you get a, get a peek at it. It's pretty cool to watch. Absolutely, yeah. Hey, Alex, what do you do with those supports, though? I mean, how do you clean those out or those, you know? Oh, this, okay, so the supports, we're gonna get to the supports in a second. And it is done, there we go. Let's just hop back into PowerPoint and just wanna show you guys, this is why we were kind of nervous in looking over this, um, Dominic. Back to you. Yep, okay. We're good? Yeah, so this is, um, this is what, so the one on the left is the first print, the one in the middle is the second, and the third one is all three of them together. And again, attempt number one and two were with it lying it started to peel, Yeah, and it yeah. started to peel up, and that print head would just keep running into the layer before, and it, it starts to adhere to the print head itself, and it just ends up being a giant mess, which yeah. is why you should always watch over the first one. Exactly. And, and over on the right, our successful print, you can see the, uh, the supports. Okay, we've been getting a lot of questions about the supports. How okay. do they come off? How do they come off? Pretty easy. You just break it off. Yep. It's super easy. It is a very, very small point of contact. And you can you could actually see that in the uh, Print Studio 
when you slice through it, it's a very, very small contact and it, it just breaks off really easily. And here we have just some of the many, many different examples of what you can do with uh, the 3D printing and um, machine work that's available to us in the build space. And I'm always amazed as to how creative people are. Yeah. These, it, and these, just so you know, these are just models that we have around the office here. I took these pictures of them this morning to show you what you can do with them and tie them back to your work, whether you work in um, architecture and construction or whether you work in um, industrial design or whatever you do. Um, 3D printing can help you really show what you're designing um, to your clients and, and really get a, a feel for it. You can hand them something over that they can hold in their hand and say, oh, I love this, or, oh, you know, maybe you could change it in this way or that way. Right, and, and again, it's coming full circle to how we started the presentation where it, it's so easy now to go from the digital to the tangible. And it, it's just becoming much, much more prevalent in society. And, it, it, and you can see the, the many different advantages and benefits of doing this. We have a whole bunch of links for you guys. Uh, we tried to throw as much out to you guys as we possibly could, but we understand that there's, there's a lot more out there. We wanted to touch on a, on a couple of things, but uh, we got these links here, exporting a 3D solid to an SCL file. Um, we gave you the link where you can go to download Print Studio, um, some more documentation on the Type A 3D plotter, some links to the build space. We got the Facebook link and the Twitter link, and we also have a link to our previous webinar where we were primarily in AutoCAD creating on what you saw us create today. So you have access to that. And also um, just a, a brief discussion between the different materials that are available out there. Juan, do we have, uh, what do we have for Q&A? Do you have any good questions? Yeah, can you maybe just uh, describe the different types of materials maybe? Because we talk about The ones that I know pretty well, and I, I know the acronyms, I, I would be hard pressed to pronounce the actual chemical name, um, but PLA and ABS are both, um, they're both plastics. They're both plastic filaments. Um, I know we, we did include a link that actually compares the two. They're very similar in the way that they come out um, as far as melting point. They, um, they melt at a very low temperature and uh, as an example, if, if you printed something out as a as a tool in your car and you left it in there on a very hot day, you might come out and find that it's warped. Um, however, they do hold up pretty well if you're keeping them within normal temperatures. Uh, they're great for prototypes and that sort of thing. Um, the resin, I don't know what the resin is made of, but it starts as a liquid. And so, for instance, the ember um, starts with this resin bath and it cures um, with, uh, with light, and that will cure it a layer at a time. As light flashes, it flashes a layer um, of the model and builds it up. It kind of pulls it out. Somebody likened it to Terminator, like watching Terminator. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Um, that's probably the funniest analogy, uh, yeah, analogy <laughs> that I've heard yet. But yeah, it's like watching something get pulled out of the ooze and come to life. Um, and then, let's see, I'm, I'm thinking of like, I'm thinking of uh, Shapeways. So they, they have a bunch of different options like that. They do sandstone models and um, different types of metals. But I, I think some of those are casts and not necessarily 3D printing. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're looking for. Um, we focus primarily on the, on the plastics. Um, so again, there, there's a link in the PowerPoint to that PLA versus um, ABS to compare the two plastics. Um, and I, I tried that, that memorizing, was, that was yeah, one of them is made with sugar, I found out, yeah. but I tried memorizing the chemical names, but they're, they're like 26 characters long, so they, we, they just we abbreviated it. We'd today. probably embarrass ourselves trying to pronounce yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, better not. <laughs> um, we, we will give you that link, though, and, and you can try to pronounce them. 
So the other uh, question was, can what can you do with the older versions? I mean, in 2017, you click on the print studio button or send your previous rendering, but in 2016 and 2017, what's our best option? Sure. Um, so in uh, in AutoCAD 2017, they introduced the 3D print command to make it easy to get to Print Studio. The Print Studio is pretty new. So in previous versions of AutoCAD, if you're not on 2017 yet, you can use the STL out command in order to create an STL, um, which is essentially what that 3D print command is doing. It's just also bringing that STL file into directly into Print Studio. So there's a, another step in there um, for previous versions, and you would you would use the STL out command and save that STL file. And then in Print Studio, and I can show you this on screen actually, um, in Print Studio, um, Ramon, can you see my screen? I just want to make sure. Yes, I do. Perfect, okay. Um, so in here, you would come into open, and we're just going to discard the one that we're working on. And, oh. That's, uh, I'm sorry, it's not open, it's import. Where's import? Ah. I didn't practice this part well, did I? <laughs> new? Let's try new. Ah, import. Okay, so if you're currently in one, I, I didn't see the import option there. Uh, import will bring you to, so for instance, we have these other um, ones from last week. Uh, let's bring the canyon, for example. Uh, set this to inches, so it'll it'll prompt you to pick the model size and say OK. And there we go. That brought in my STL file, and it's as easy as that. So STL out, bring it in, and we're good. All right, that is our last question. Um, if you have more questions, um, feel free to email us at autodesk.help.webinars.com, or at, at autodesk.com. <laughs> I uh, almost had it there. All right. Um, other than that, thank you so much for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, thanks.